you might have heard that NASA spent millions of dollars to invent a pen that could work in space. The Russians didn't spend a dime and they just wrote with a pencil. The pencil worked in space, but since there was no gravity, the pen wouldn't. But before we get into this situation, let's learn a little about the ballpoint pen. If you didn't already know, most pens in the world are ballpoint pens. All of them have a very tiny ball in the tip like this, and most of them are made by Bic. If you've seen our video about tungsten, you'll know that the ball of a ballpoint pen is made from tungsten carbide, and that's one of the hardest metals on earth. The pen itself is very simple, but the ball bearing is not that simple. It has to be so smooth and perfect that the ink rolls off of it and it doesn't have any blank spots, and it has to not let it leak. Anything else used instead of tungsten carbide for the ball it's not going to work very well. It will either leak or create imperfections in your writing. In a pen manufacturing company, the most important pole is the ballpoint. Since it has to be perfect, these balls are inspected individually to make sure they're very smooth and perfect. If there is a hairline crack on it, it's not going to work. Either way, when a perfect ball is located in the tip of your pen, it will apply the perfect amount of ink and work smoothly. But when the ink gets applied to the ball, it has nothing to do with anything. The thing that allows that to happen is gravity. The gravity applies the ink and the ball rolls. Since we're talking about gravity, let's talk about NASA. A pen that cost millions of dollars to make, but it can write in space. It's the 1960s, and the Soviets and the US are fighting in every way possible. The most famous fight they had was about the space race. In the beginning of the video we said the Soviets used the pencil and had no issues in space. But that was a lie. We have to know that in the beginning, NASA also used pencils in space, but they realized when you use a pencil and the tip breaks, a lot of tiny fragments get spread into the air. And when there's no gravity, it goes everywhere, like in your eyes, ears, and other places. In the year 1965, NASA decided to create a pencil that doesn't break. And obviously, this pencil was never successfully made. So this pen, had to have been made, so the astronauts can do their homework in space. There was another mistake in our previous sentence. The money that was spent on this pen was not by NASA, but it was a company called the Fisher Pen Company, and they paid everything to have this pen designed. And you could say, NASA was the main advertisement for this pen company. In the 1960s, the Fisher Pen Company said, we spent a million dollars in R&D to create this pen, and we made it so it could work in zero gravity. As you know, Fisher is a pen making company, and they're not that small. But how do they make it? It doesn't make sense for a ballpoint pen to work in zero gravity. This product is not really a pen, but it's a capsule of 30 psi of nitrogen, and it's in a container that doesn't really have ink. It's kind of a gel type ink, and it always has a permanent pressure, and that allows it to work in zero gravity. And that means it's always writing, even if it's not in zero gravity or if it's in space. When the Fisher Pen Company was finished with this product, they showed it to NASA, and they really liked it and they also ordered 400 of them. They said okay, but that's at $128 each. NASA was like, what the hell type of price is that? We don't want it anymore. NASA said, if you charge $2.40 each, we'll buy the 400. 
And if you count $2.40 in the 1960s, it's about $17.40. You might say NASA is the master at bargaining, but NASA knew what they were doing. The Fisher Pin Company wanted to way overcharge, but NASA said this is free advertisement. This pen is not anything special, and you can buy it to this day. You could even buy it on Amazon, and it's about $28 each. But let us learn a little bit more about the ballpoint pen technology. In the 1950s, if you wanted to buy a ballpoint pen, you would have to at least pay $10. And that's more than $100 in today's money. In the same era, a Hungarian writer by the name of Lazaro Biro was using a fountain pen and every time he used it, he was annoyed on how unreliable it is. And as you know, fountain pens dry up and stop working sometimes. He realized that typewriters use a different ink and they dry very quickly. He thought to himself, I could use this ink to create a better pen and I'm gonna create something that's way better than a fountain pen. This is when Marcel Bick comes along. He was an engineer and wanted to manufacture something. He gets his money together and buys a rundown factory in Clichy, France. Byrus had the patent on the ballpoint pen in the 1950s. Bick asks him to sell the patent to him. He told him, I want to buy your invention and I want to make a pen extremely cheap but reliable. Like we said, in that era, having a ballpoint pen was a luxury and it was $10. Since Bick was an engineer, he started to work when he bought the patent and he created a ballpoint pen that was very cheap but at the same quality of writing. Bick successfully created this pen and dropped the prices of pen drastically and they said his price was one three hundredths of an actual pen. You could say Big made a revolution in the pen world. And that was in a way, having a pen a few years before this was a luxury and not everyone could buy one. This revolution was so quick that everywhere you could find this pen. And to this day, every year, a hundred billion big pens are manufactured. When this pen came out in the beginning, it was about 29 cents each, and that price still remains. The quality is the same, but manufacturing it is easier now. And that is why all this time has passed, but the price is still the same.